Hey golfers and welcome back to another edition of Road to the PGA Championship with Thomas Campbell. Thomas, today we're talking about mini tours, Monday qualifiers, and Q School. So there's a glamorous side to professional golf that viewers see on TV, they see major tournaments, they see the PGA Tour. Uh, there's the non-glamorous side that you are very familiar with that is a little bit different and probably a little bit more stressful. Yeah, I mean, you see the top guys in the world playing every week on TV. Mm -hmm. We don't realize how many good players out there there are that also are just as good as these guys on TV, but just don't have a place to play. Right, I mean, there's, it's, it's, when you look at like, you know, the Corn Ferry Q School and the PGA Tour Q School, there's a very small difference between you know, making potentially millions and have, being very comfortable and then going back and, you know, it's, it's a very huge financial burden that these guys have to deal with and it's a very stressful one. So that was something you did for a few years. You were that player that was, you know, paying a lot of money to be on, you know, in these mini tours, um, trying to qualify for, you know, what is now the Corn Ferry Tour um, events. Talk me through that and kind of the, maybe the stress level and then Maybe some of the costs too, if you could, uh, really how much you know, you're putting into this. Yeah, I think we break it up into three sections, the mini tours, the Q school, and the Monday qualifiers. So let's talk about mini tours first. Mm -hmm. So mini tours, that's the not so glamorous part. That's, yeah. uh, I mean, it's great, you're competing, um, you're, you're playing for opportunity to make some money and make some good money, yeah. but it's expensive. It's a very expensive route. Um, so for me, I'm looking at probably spending $50,000 a year just on traveling around, playing mini tours all year round, throwing, a few, throwing in a few Monday qualifiers and doing yeah. a few school at the end of the year. And that's on a very tight budget. Mm -hmm. That's with me having built relationships, staying with uh, members of the course, staying with people I know in the area. If I'm staying in a hotel, the highest star level is definitely two. It's definitely not <laughs> any higher. I've, I've definitely stayed in some pretty interesting places. And <laughs> most of the time it's by myself, but I had, had brought my wife and yeah, she was like, where are we staying here this, this time? But, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's expensive. Um, I mean, talking about like the, the actual mini tour life, a mini tour costs about $1,000 to play in an event, just alone. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to talk about, I mean, there's so many different mini tours out there. You've got t tours that are down in Florida, you've got tours down Texas area, mm -hmm. Arizona, out east. Um, I split it a little bit. I, I traveled all over playing different, different ones. And I, in the summertime, being from Minnesota, I played on the Dakotas Tour. Okay. So the Dakotas Tour was a very, very had a very, very good return on investment. The reason I say that is at least 100% of your money that you paid entry fee would go back into the purse. Nice. Because they had some sponsorship help. But if you uh, look at the other mini tours, you're looking at probably about a 75% return of what you're paying. So for example, if you're paying a $1,000 entry fee, it's say 60 guys playing, he's looking at a $60,000 purse on the Dakotas Tour, but you take 70, times that by 75%, now you're, you're talking, sure. we're talking 45000 It limits the, the money that you can right. get back. And so, I mean, you talk about return on investment. The one thing I'm curious about is when you play in these events, you know, is there a you know, position in the leaderboard that maybe that you're aiming for? It's like, okay, I have to get this to make sure this event was worth it. I mean, are, is that something you're thinking about when you're playing or is, you know, because that would add another element of stress that I, know right. I probably wouldn't be able to handle. Yeah, I mean, the, the money is very top heavy. So in that sixty thousand dollar purse, yeah. you know, you're talking fifteen thousand for first. Um, that obviously that's a decent amount already right. taken out of the, out of the purse. But only a third get paid. Mm -hmm. So you okay. got to make the cut if you finish in the top third after two rounds. You get to play that final round. But if you don't finish in the in the top third, obviously your money's gone. You don't you don't make right. the cut. You don't get any money back. Your thousand dollars plus your travel fees, your right. lodging, whatever it costs to get you there and play in that event um, is gone out out. It's gone. Right. Yeah. And so that's the thing I, I, I'm so curious about because, I mean, if you think about it, you're, every time you play, you're playing for your livelihood at that point. And there's, I mean, how many golfers out there are doing this professionally for a living and they're trying to, you know, just make enough to get by and keep really chasing their dream and then kind of waiting for that big break at Q school to get to that next level. But then, I mean, there's so many people that don't really get to start or they can't make it right away because they don't have that money, that funding just to get going. And so I do want to ask, is there, you know, in terms of the sponsorship side, do you have, is there, I mean, how many golfers out there maybe getting help with this type of thing? And like, what's that look like in terms of maybe asking for, for money, essentially? 
Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of my friends, a lot of my competitors, they absolutely had help, they had, they had backing. I personally, I had, I had one guy that helped me out, gave me $10,000 for three years, mm -hmm. which, is, which got me, I, I was very financially secure because I always was able to stay in the green, which, which is good. Yeah. But it, it, it didn't enable me to be a little bit more luxurious and, and you know, travel a little bit nicer yeah. and not have to stay in a one-star hotel or anything <laughs> like that. It just helped me to pay, pay for the entry fees and then have enough money to keep going for the year. Yeah, but, so. Uh, you talk about the costs. So mm -hmm. I talk about mini tours. You know, mm -hmm. the PGA Tour, they have feeder tours underneath the Corn Ferry Tour. So you've got your PGA Tour Latin America, you've yeah. got the PGA Tour Canada, the PGA Tour China. Now, with COVID the last couple of years, it's been a little bit more difficult for them to hold those events. But even still, traveling to Canada is very expensive. Right. And then there's Q schools associated with those that there as mm -hmm. well. So it's it's very very expensive. Um, you know, I talked about spending fifty thousand dollars a year on just ex expenses and alone. If you're going to do it right, you know, I, I'd say I probably didn't give myself the best opportunity because I didn't have the, the full funds there. You're probably looking at spending seventy five thousand dollars a year on, yeah. including your, your your living costs essentially. But and, it's and so the 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 main way you get that money back, and then obviously have enough to to live on is is just performing well in these events, right? I mean, making the prize money back. And right. So again, if you're putting fifty to $75,000 a year into this, that's a lot of pressure to play well every time you, you know, you tee off. Yeah, so. and what, what a lot of golfers do, they, they create like a, a sponsorship or an investment op opportunity for members at, the, at a golf club that they know that, you know, you know might have done, have done well with their business and are able to help sponsor a golfer. and. Yeah. There's a lot of golfers out there that have investment opportunities where, say, they'll sell shares. So okay. they'll, they'll maybe, maybe a share is $1,000 a share. Uh, they're trying to raise $75,000 for the year. One share is, you know, you're talking about sure. you know, it's, it's a percentage of what you're, um, what's going to happen. Right. And, then and then over their career, as they make, you know, earnings, they kind of then reward back. their investors, right, right, and give that back. Yep. So, I mean, that does make sense because if, and I, I think there's a lot of golfers, like you said, like you're one yourself ton of talent and it's just about I mean in a way is it about kind of getting hot at the right time when you get to these Q schools and get to these events if you get hot at the right time you can make your money back kind of quickly it's just there are times too you really got to make sure you uh, you know you don't waste too many times missing the cut or not making any money at these events right and in the mini tours too a lot of guys are living out of the car they're, they're like you mentioned they might have somewhere to stay at some events but they're, they're traveling they're putting miles on their car 20 mm -hmm. 30 thousand miles easily driving around over the country and Showing up to events, playing, making the cut, hopefully, and then moving on right. to the next next event. And the Dakotas Tour, when I was was playing, it's a, it's a pretty short season, and in, in Midwest is right. you know, <laughs> it's it's relatively short, and there's a lot of events. But I liked it because the return on investment was very good. As I mentioned, there's many tours down southeast, mm -hmm. south southwest. There's really all, all over the country, but I found that the return on investment was very okay. very good. Maybe not the, the biggest purses. Probably other tours out there that have a little bigger purses. But once again. Return on investment is what I was yeah. looking at because those bigger purses probably meant you know a larger entry fee to begin right. with. Right. So yes. Uh, so now obviously at some point in your career you decided to change directions and no longer do have this lifestyle, but you kind of started with the you know PGA section of Minnesota and competing in those events. So when did you make that decision and kind of why did you change gears and what kind of prompted that? Well, I think it was. I wanted to be a little more financially secure. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted, you know, I wanted to save money for, you know, I want to invest money and save yeah. money and put my put my family in a good spot. And, you know, I accepted. Essentially, became full time at Second Swing. Mm -hmm. um, so I became a full time fitter, and you know, I looked at the PGA route, and I, I was classified as a club fitter or a club repair based on on the PGA okay. route. So I I figured, why not do it? So I I spent three years in as, as an associate trying to get my Class A and. In August, I got elected Class A, and the return on investment, like playing in events, it's uh, it's it's quite significantly different. Like the cost of playing an event. Well, one, you're living in, you're staying in your own house. Yeah. The only really expenses I, I've got to pay is is gas to get to the event and mm -hmm. the entry fee. The entry fees for for a lot of my section events, a lot of proams, I'm talking probably average about $150 per event, versus $1,000. Right. For, for, so, and. I'm, I'm looking at my results over the last three years playing in the Minnesota section. I've won almost a third of my events. 
which is impressive. And yes. that's one way to make right. your money back pretty and well. And that's, uh, that's, that's 90 events. So yeah. this year I think I won 11. Okay. Um, and just talking about the costs associated with, with the events that I'm playing. And uh, I, I think I made, I think I was number one on the money list, a little over $29,000. On the section money list, and I probably spent about five thousand dollars on entry fees. Okay, and a little bit of gas money, right? A little bit of food money, and and I'm also working full time. Mm-hmm. I'm teaching, creating content, yeah. club fitting, working in the industry, and yeah. in a better financial spot versus not having a job, <laughs> doing we're doing some jobs on the side, spending fifty thousand dollars a year trying to and then trying to make that money back. Yeah, so I mean, for you, it's just a. a, a dollars and cents thing, you know, right. where you kind of realized I, I'm, I could be much better off working full time and then getting those opportunities in the summer around here, Minnesota PGA section. And obviously you recognize that you could win a lot in right. this area as well. So, and I also mentioned, you know, the reason we're doing this series is the role to the PGA championship. There's yeah. an opportunity for me to try and sneak into a major championship, keep playing well. I mean, the National Club Pro, the winner of that, can play in some PGA Tour events, get some get starts there too. So I'm not done trying to, to make it on tour. Mm-hmm. It's just a different route. It's just a yeah. little bit different route, financially secure route. I'm I'm definitely in a spot where I want to keep going at it and keep playing yeah. and keep competi- competing, not giving up on that dream. But I'm just I do a lot of things in the golf industry these days as opposed right. to just going and playing. Which I think, in a way, probably helps you a little bit too with. Uh, you know your mindset competitively too. Yet you're not wearing yourself down by going all over the country, playing these events, spending all the money that you're doing. Um, it's a little bit um, less stressful probably now. Um, in addition to all the other bonuses that you just mentioned about your lifestyle now, and of course you have a child now, right. and so you're with your family more often, and so you're not you know away and again stressing out about oh I have to get here to make sure I am in the green this week yeah I'm very lucky you know my, my wife she teaches so her summers mm-hmm. are actually off and when my when I'm my busy competitive season yeah. is in the summertime so thank you uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for letting me be able to travel <laughs> so my wife's been great and very supportive it can also be a little stressful time because I want to be around also too but I know my schedule gets very busy in the summertime playing wise and there's certain times where you know, I've got to select event or maybe mm-hmm. skip that event just because it just gets too much and it can get a little bit over the top on so many events and you got to pick and choose them. I think I've spent three years now in the Minnesota section I've kind of got a better understanding of what events I want to play in next mm-hmm. year and which ones I might just kind of skip and give myself a, t- a chance to refresh. The Minnesota PGA Player of the Year, technically I did win that this year because I was only in Class A by August 1st. All my points before that were, were void. So, okay. unfortunately, I didn't get the, the sponsors invited into the 3M Open. Oh. Um, but next year, that's definitely going to be my goal. So I'll be focusing on those events that accumulate those points. Okay, so that's even another kind of path along with this is that sort of PGA Player of the Year honor that also gets you into the 3M Open, right. um, which is on the PGA Tour. So there are, it, seem, it seems like you've kind of chosen a unique path that is a little bit different maybe than your conventional way some of these guys you know, rise through these mini tours, they get to the Corn Ferry Tour, they get to the, or maybe it's one of those uh, kind of sub PGA tours, and then they make it all the way to the top. Right. Uh, but this is kind of a different route where it allow you to, you know, be more financially secure, um, be with your family a little bit more and stay local. And then there are some opportunities within those events to go nationally, like the PGA Professional National Championship uh, in April. So. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. and. Part of this series is I'm going to be bringing everyone along to try and get prepared for that. And right. come middle, middle of April, I want my game to be in a, in a great spot where I can not only finish top 20 and qualify for the PGA Championship, but have a chance to win it because mm-hmm. there's so much more that goes associated exactly. with winning. So, uh, talking about Q School, Q School mm-hmm. and, and Monday qualifiers, touching on that a little bit. Uh, Q School, as I mentioned, the Corn Ferry Tour. But also, you've got the Canadian tour, and you've got the mm-hmm. Latin American tour. There's Q schools associated with those these days. Uh, I never did any of those two, but I did do the was the web.com tour at the time. Okay. Um, it's you're basically paying about ten thousand dollars. the The entry is about five thousand dollars just to kind of show up. If you're exempt in the first stage, there's actually a pre qualifying stage where you might have to advance if you don't have any status or haven't played in certain events. Wow. As well. Luckily, I didn't even have to do the, the, the pre based because I Monday qualified into a web.com event in 2015, okay. and I made the cut in that event. So, in fact, I made the cut. I was kind of exempt 
for okay. the next couple of years, and then I, I had progressed far enough in Q school each time to skip the first pre qualifying. Okay. But so technically, there's four stages. But yeah. So there's pre qualifying, there's stage one, stage two, and then final stage. And how many golfers do you think are kind of at that original stage, right? So, it, I mean, and they eventually cut it down to, I think, 20 or 25 that get their corn fairy status. And so, how many does that narrow it down from that are vying for these? that status. Right, so first stage, there's probably, I think there's 12 first stage sites. Um, okay. And then I think there's like six pre-qualifying sites that you're talking 80 golfers that play it. And then okay. top 25 really ad advance to the, the next stage. Okay. So each stage is basically elimination. You gotta finish in the top 25 to not be, elim to not be eliminated. Um, my best year I think was 2014. I was inside the number the whole the whole way at second stage, and I had the opportunity to have status on the web.com, and I missed by one shot. Mm. Yeah, I I just it, it sucked. It really 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 yeah. sucked, and it was one of those weeks where it was freezing cold playing down in in, in Texas, and um, I was playing I was playing really good, and the swing just got sloppier and sloppier as each round got went on, and yeah, um, my short game kept me in that that time, and at the time my swing was not very good. I really wish I was you know had my swing now when I was at Q School because my, my golf swing is so much better than it was five years ago, uh, even six, seven years ago, because I used to hit this big slice. <laughs> I, my miss would be always to the right, and mm -hmm. that's why I like, like to draw the ball now, because I just hated that miss to the right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was so close there. Um, it's an expensive route. So you've got your, your three stages. You've got to pay your entry fee. You've got to be there for the week. You've got to caddy. You've got to pay your caddy basically $1,000 for the week. You're talking $10,000 you're spending just on Q School alone. Yeah, which is, again, if you don't make it through, which a lot of these players do not make it through, that's a significant investment and a lot of funds lost. And right. then the other route, too, that we've talked about briefly, so the, the Monday qualifier route, um, where, like you said, you know, there is there is a Monday qualifier in Minnesota for, like, the 3M Open, and that's in the PGA Tour. So these Monday qualifiers, it's not we're not just talking about PGA Tour. You know, that's also, like, Corn Ferry Tour, what used to be the web.com tour. Yep. So, those, it's another route, and like you said, you made the cut at one. What's the entry for those? And then, I mean, I know it varies probably on how many, you know, can make it through from the qualifier. Right, yeah, so I did spend a, f a couple of years there where I would do Monday qualifiers earlier on the season. Now, if I did well, made a couple of cuts, I'd keep chasing that to try and accumulate enough money or, or points on the, on the Corn Ferry Tour, what was the web.com. Yeah. Um, so I would try and get enough status uh, and get, get enough status right. so I could play for the rest of the year. Um, it, my expenses for those, so believe it or not, cost $500 to play one round. There's no money associated with it, so there's no purse. Right, so for the, just the qualifier. Just, just for the qualifier. Just to get into yep. the, the big event. Right, so you got about 300 guys for 12 spots. They usually have two different sites, so there's six spots per site. Um, okay. you got to shoot 64 or 65 or lower, or you don't even think about coming back. Yeah. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a real grind. So you pay $500 entry fee, you gotta get there, you're flying there because one, one week you're playing in Louisiana, the next week you'll be mm -hmm. playing up in Nebraska, the next week you're playing. Yeah, in, yeah. I mean, so yeah that, goes, that corn fairy tour goes all over the country. Right, yeah, so uh, you gotta get there, gotta pay for a hotel, gotta pay for rental car, flights, food. Practice I, round. Yeah, practice round. Um, and, the golf courses you know you play on, some of them are kind of like just your muni. So it's really interesting. So you're paying five hundred dollars to play at a golf course that it's not really in the <laughs> best shape. That's why you, I mean, so you get some ridiculous score. Sometimes at sixty three might be the cutoff. Yeah. At a at a qualifier, shoot nine under, you shoot eight under, and you're like, don't right. even sniff a so, chance. So well, and what it, I mean, I have to imagine, you know, if you start one of these events, you're not quite playing well, you're not firing at pins, and you're even through seven, that's got to be pretty demoralizing right. for the rest of the round <laughs> because you're kind of like, well, I have to basically yeah. birdie out. <laughs> to, you have to get off a hot make, start. Yeah. Right. You yeah. have to know how to go low. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a lot of guys that, that can go low. There's other guys that shoot 65, 67 every time and don't even... That doesn't do anything for them. doesn't do anything you know, for them. That's, yeah. And that's eventually, I mean, that's wasting $1,000 essentially, right? Yeah. I mean, well, it's really like $1,500 is you get there on Saturday, leave, on, leave you're there till, till Monday, the Monday qualifier. And you're also missing out opportunity to play in other events because that's usually sure. when the events mm -hmm. are. So it's an expensive route. Uh, there's, there's guys that have money qualified into events and they've, they've, they've continued on. Uh, I'm, I've money qualified into a couple events. I'm money qualified on web.com, Canadian tour event. Um, both times I 
end up making the cut, which is which is which is quite a quite a you know for not having any status, coming yeah. in Monday qualifying, and it's a big deal. The cut, it's a big deal, but you got to finish in the top twenty five to play in the next event. Okay. Um, I didn't I didn't finish top twenty five. So, so if you finish to top twenty five, you're exempt into the next event. Yes. So you don't yep. have to do any qualifiers. Correct. That's the that's the Corn Ferry Tour. If it's the if it's a PGA yeah. Tour Monday qualifier, it's top ten. Plus. If you don't, then it really makes it even more difficult with the PGA Tour because there's actually a pre-qualifier to the Monday qualifier right. on Thursdays. <laughs> so you're kind of so. you're illustrating the, these, I guess, various different paths that professional golfers can take to really try to make it, but all of them seem super difficult and expensive. Yeah, the and simple answer is you just got to learn how to shoot super low. If your if yeah. your game is not where it needs to be, don't even show up because shooting 68, 67, 68 every time is just not going to get mm -hmm. you anywhere. Right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, and now you're in a spot, I mean, I guess if you could kind of sum this up, maybe compare the difference in you know, how you feel about your decision to kind of go away from that to now where you're at. You know, you mentioned everything that you do for the golf industry now, and you know, you're home, you're playing professional events locally for the most part. I mean, now kind of summarize it with those differences that in your life that you're having now. Well, I mean, with the position I'm in, family, full-time job, um, it's, I don't have the time to practice any, really mm -hmm. anymore. And this, I still you know, had opportunity to go, I mean, I had an investor or something like that, so I could go and, and play and chase it. You know, it's hard, so I'm, I'm happy where, where I am. Still a piece of me was like, oh, why, why don't you give yourself just a couple more years to try, to try and make it? And clearly, I'm, I'm a good player. Uh, I've won a lot of events, and, um, but mm -hmm. this route here, going the, the PGA route, I'm, I still am trying to use that as a way to try and sneak in, whether that's sneak into the PGA Championship, play well there, get a couple of starts, who, who knows where, mm -hmm. where else. You still have other opportunities, as US Open qualifying, yep. majors there, uh, and then, as I mentioned, the 3M opportunity there. I am exempt into the 3M um, Monday qualifier for next year, which is, which is always, always nice. Okay. I did that, I didn't do it this year, uh, I just, just had the arrival of my uh, my newborn, so yeah. it was a little bit more demanding on time. But uh, in 2020, I actually did the 3M Monday qualifier. I double bogeyed the first hole and shot 65. So you got the game, and, so that, I got the and game. they held that qualifier at the same course, right? If they, I remember correctly, they do. every yep. year. So you were familiar with that, and there's a level of confidence there, I'm sure, with future attempts at that Monday qualifier. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, uh, I, I might sneak up and do a, month, a couple of Canadian tour Monday qualifiers once the borders open up. We'll see how mm -hmm. everything goes with that. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to be chasing many tours. Um, the other challenge I have is as a PGA member, you can only play in a certain amount of events, um, of those events per year. I think, believe it's up to eight. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to play in more than eight mini tours, what's considered a mini tour or Corn Ferry tour events or anything like that, then I would jeopardize my PGA tour, PGA member status. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, the route that you've chosen has put you in the position now to be playing for a spot in the PGA championship um, because now you finished top tw or well, top eight in the Minnesota PGA section championship to get into the PGA professional national championship in April. And that's what the series is about. And so, I mean, now you're in that spot, you got to get top 20 and then you're in a major, which right. It's kind of it's, it's got to feel exciting, but also kind of maybe a little bit stressful and nervous, knowing that you know after all of that, the money spent and the time and the travel, you have this opportunity in front of you. So that's what this series is about. It's chronicling that, and it's fun to kind of be following it here. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm really committed to put in all, all the work I possibly can to prepare for for April, mm -hmm. and that's going to include practicing in the, in the off season. I have my Golf barn that's fi that's finished now, yeah. and that I that I've got that I can do in the evenings after I put the little one down. Uh, I've got opportunities there. I'm going to work on uh, fitness. So our next episode is going to be focusing on fitness, going through an efficient fitness evaluation, seeing where I'm at, and putting together a program that's catered to to my specific body tendencies. Uh, so that uh, mental game, putter fitting. I'm lucky I have resources such as like Larry Bobka, for yeah. example. So I'm going to be trying to utilize his, uh, his wealth of knowledge there as well, because mental game putting is probably part of the reason why I'm sitting here and I'm not playing on tour, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to bring everyone along that journey and hopefully I get there. Yeah, we were all rooting for you and uh, it's fun to be following along here too. So 
Um, to the viewers, we thank you for watching and we thank you for following along on this series that we put together, The Road to the PGA Championship with Thomas Campbell. And stay tuned for the next episode, like Thomas said, is going to be on sort of uh, where he's at fitness-wise. And uh, Thomas, thank you for joining today, giving us the insight and the uh, inside scoop on, you know, mini tours, Monday qualifying, things like that, because it's, it's a pretty interesting story there. Yeah, it's a, it's a different route, but it's time to get to work and chase that PGA Tour Championship.